Hey, what's up? I'm Chris Abbott, and in this video, we're gonna be talking about how to attract young people to church, coming up. All right, in this video, we're gonna be talking about the seven types of church marketing you should be using to attract young people that actually work. And we're gonna be talking about a social media that's growing at twice the rate of Facebook. And we'll introduce you to a social media technique you've probably never heard of that'll bring in a ton of people. All right, now in his research, Tom Rainer found that 84% of churches in North America are either plateaued or declining. Now, while this is a disturbing church trend, there's something we can actually do about it. See, most churches are perfectly equipped to reach a world that doesn't exist anymore, and too many churches are using 20th century methods to reach a 21st century world. The truth is, if we fail to effectively learn how to reach the next generation, then our church has an expiration date. Every single person that comes to us is a gift from the Holy Spirit, so let's figure out how to be good stewards of that and actually attract more people to our church. Now, before we get to the seven things, let me tell you what didn't make the list of how to reach young people. TV, radio, newspaper, magazines, direct mail. These methods are outdated, they're overpriced, and they're ineffective. Okay, so while these things didn't make the list, let's dive into the seven things that did. All right, so the first two that we're gonna talk about are Facebook and Instagram ads. Now on Facebook, there's 2.8 billion people and 1.7 billion log in every single day. And the average person spends 38 minutes a day on Facebook. Now Instagram is owned by Facebook. It has a billion users itself. And the really interesting thing is that most young people, meaning millennials and Gen Zers, the way that they actually get ready in the morning is they'll literally pull up their phone, open up Instagram, click on stories, and then prop it up on the mirror while they're getting ready. So while they're sitting there, brushing their teeth, doing their hair, girls are doing their makeup. They're literally just letting Instagram stories play in the background. So one of the best ways that we can reach these young people is by using targeted Facebook and Instagram ads. When you're setting up your ad, you can literally click one button and tell Facebook to show that ad on both Facebook and Instagram. Now, most people don't realize this, but YouTube is actually a search engine. And the best part about YouTube is even when people go in and they Google something, Google now puts YouTube videos in the search results. So running ads on YouTube is a great way to show up and attract young people to church. In fact, 95% of Generation Z spends an hour a day on YouTube. So if you're trying to reach the next generation, the best place to show up is YouTube. Okay, so a little while back, I wanted to test how do YouTube ads match up against Facebook and Instagram ads. So for two months, I turned off all of my Facebook Instagram ads and I only ran ads on YouTube. But YouTube really wasn't that far behind. In fact, YouTube had a lot more engagement and we actually sent a lot more people to the website using YouTube ads. We just had slightly less plan your visits. I actually got the best results when I ran Facebook and Instagram ads and sent people to our plan your visit page on our website. And then I retargeted everyone who hit that page on YouTube with a plan your visit specific tour of our church. So basically I targeted them on Facebook and Instagram, sent them to our plan your visit page, and then followed them around YouTube with a plan your visit tour. Now that might be a little bit more of an advanced strategy, but we literally generated hundreds of new visitors using that strategy alone, and it's worth diving into. Number four, invite cards. Now, invite cards are kind of a lost art these days, especially because we look so much at digital. And while I don't think it's a great way to only invite people to church, if you use this in addition to social media and digital marketing, it can be really, really effective. In fact, you can go to clubflyers.com and you can get 5,000 four by six postcards and 5,000 invite business cards for about 150 bucks. That's 10,000 invite cards you can equip your entire congregation with for 150 bucks. One of the reasons this is so effective is because this isn't like direct mail that just comes anonymously in your mailbox. It takes a human being interacting with another human being and handing them an invite card. So it kind of prompts a conversation, especially if those invite cards are echoing what your Facebook and Instagram and YouTube ads are saying, it's all gonna form a nice cohesive united front. All right, so before I get to my last few points, if you're liking this video and you want more content like this on how to attract young people to church, we talk about this kind of stuff all the time. So make sure to subscribe to the channel so you can get all of our content. All right, number five, the thunderclap. I learned this strategy from my friend, Pastor Steve John, who used it at his church and went from 25 plan your visits to about triple that in one week using this simple social media strategy. Here's what happens. Now, you only wanna do this about once, maybe twice a year because you're asking your people to participate, but it's really, really effective. So I'd recommend using this for Easter or maybe one other time out of the year. And here's what you do. You basically stand up on a Sunday before your event and you announce to your church, guys, I need your help. 
Okay, next Sunday, we're having Easter Sunday, and we want to get as many unchurched people in here as possible. Would you be willing to commit to creating a 30-second video and posting it on social media? You can post it on your Facebook page, Instagram, Twitter, it doesn't matter. I'm just asking you to post a 30-second video about what God's doing in your life, and then an invite to our Easter service next week. Then, make sure to get their buy-in. So, ask every single person who's willing to record a 30-second video and post it on social media to stand up and commit to you to do it. Most of the time, you'll have a ton of people in the congregation who are willing to create a quick 30 second video and inviting people out to your event next Sunday. Then on Monday, you just send a text message out to everyone who committed to doing the thunderclap and you ask them to make sure to record their video and post that day. And then you want to follow up with one more text on Tuesday for any of the late stragglers who maybe got busy the day before or forgot about it. Just reminding them, hey, if you haven't done your video yet, could you just record a quick 30 second video talking about what God's doing in your life and inviting people out to Easter Sunday and post it on social today. The reason we call this the thunderclap is because this is going to create a social thunderclap that's going to echo throughout all of social media. So you're going to have people posting on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, maybe even Snapchat or TikTok, right? And so what's going to happen is it's literally going to echo throughout your entire community of all these people. If you get 25, 30, maybe even 40 or 50 people that are doing this all on Monday and Tuesday, the day before an event, you're literally going to reach tens of thousands, possibly even millions of people in your city for free using the social thunderclap. So again, because you're utilizing your congregation, you only want to do this once, maybe twice a year, but it's really, really effective to get people in the door. All right, number six, local SEO. Now, if you're unfamiliar with the term, SEO stands for search engine optimization. The thing that most people don't realize, there's actually two types of SEO. So there's global SEO and then there's local SEO. Now, for most searches, global SEO doesn't make any sense because it doesn't really matter if people on the other side of the world are Googling and trying to find your church. You want to focus on your local search engine optimization and making sure that you're showing up in the local search engines. So the best way to do that, if you have no idea where to start, is to go to getlisted.org and take a look at Maz's free tool. They'll actually show you where you are ranked and where you aren't and they can help you get up to speed for less than 200 bucks. And finally, number seven, chatbots. Okay, now the word chatbot is kind of confusing and it's a little bit weird. It's kind of like the cloud when it first came out, right? Nobody knew what the cloud was or where it was. Chatbots are kind of the same thing. But basically, chatbots are simply automated sequences that live inside of Facebook. It's kind of like a choose your own adventure book when you're a kid. Based on how people respond to the sequence, it knows which next sequence to send. And so there's kind of a decision tree, just like when you used to choose your own adventure inside of those books. For example, you could use a chatbot to walk somebody through plan your visit. So if somebody was checking you out on social media and they wanted to plan a visit, you could use a chatbot to collect their name, email, and phone number. Then you can set it up to send you a text message so that you know that John Smith just planned his visit. You could give him a call, reach out, introduce yourself, and answer any questions you might have before he shows up on Sunday. So there's a lot of different ways to use chatbots, but these are the future. And so I recommend diving in, figuring out how to use these. ManyChat is a great place to start, but figuring out how to use chatbots for your ministry because they are really, really effective. They live inside of Facebook, but you can also add them to your website, which is going to give you a lot more engagement. And it's also going to increase the amount of planner visits you're getting. All right, so if you like this video and you found it helpful and you'd like to learn more about church growth, clicking on the link below and checking out our other series, Why Isn't My Church Growing?